Welcome to Transformations with Tara. This is Tara Sutton. And my guests today are Matthew Engel. And he is an incredible astrologer. He's also an incredible um, hypnotherapist and uh, psychotherapist. And he is um, just amazing. So I have been working with my with Matthew for a long, long time with astrology shows and also uh, classes. We've been doing a lot of classes, a lot of theories. And so um, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. And it's always great. it's always a joy. Yeah. And Jason D. McKean, he is the Ohm Tarot Wizard. He is the voice of over a million Ohm recordings throughout the world. And thank you, Jason, for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Tara. And hi, Matthew. Hey, Jason. Great to see you. It's great yeah. to see you, too. It's, it's a pleasure to have both of you together. Oh, yeah, it's been great. It's It has been so great. Anyway, so um, we were having a little bit of a odd technical difficulty. So I, have, I was working on that this morning. And uh, we were uh, talking about the musical hair. Because, you know, we were talking about how the age of Aquarius, you know, it was like, how many years ago was that something like 50 or something or 45 years ago that that became like a popular thing? And how was maybe the age of Aquarius? Was it coming in then or was it the shadow, you know, the, the shadow beginning to come into? Because um, it's definitely, you know, you can look back at the 20th century and it was an absolutely different time than the rest of, you know, a uh, couple thousand years before them. You know, what a, what a difference. And so, yeah, so we're definitely going into something else. And uh, we were talking about how uh, the, the uh, it's always going, it's going backwards, the age of Aquarius, because it was the age of Pisces, and now it's going into the age of Aquarius. Where exactly it comes in, we're not sure. It, um, the epochs, it's it's something like 2,500 years or something that uh, each uh, epoch stays in. And, and it's a very gradual transition from one age, gradual. like over the course of a good couple hundred years, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so maybe there's a couple of real specialist astrologers out there that kind of know the exact, but we do know that now through this 240 year stage, we're going now into Pluto. That's Aquarius. The Pluto and, that just went into Aquarius in recent right. weeks. And we've had a lot of Aquarius. You know, we are coming in really slamming it into being a together world. You know, the world fact, this back. week is particularly significant. I mean, Pluto just ingressed into Aquarius within the last few weeks, first of all. And then earlier this week, just a few days ago, Pluto was conjuncting. So in an exact alignment mm -hmm. at zero degree, which is that first degree point of Aquarius. Yeah. Um, and today, of course, we've got a new moon in Aquarius. So I just feel like even like literally as we're speaking, this is like a jet fuel jumpstart moment. Yes. Right. It, it is, you know, if you think of that gradual transition period of the epochs, it, there are certain pivotal points that are more um, exaggerated uh, moments of transition. And I would say literally as we're talking, we're like in it. Yeah, in it. We're in it. So um, now with that, what do we do with it? What does Aquarius mean? Tell us, Matthew. Um, so I think first we want to just kind of look at, yeah, what is the archetype of Aquarius? So Aquarius is an air sign. Mm -hmm. So we're talking intellect. We're talking concepts. We're talking technology. We're talking science. We're talking data. We're talking fact. We're talking new information. Um, we're talking new developments. We're talking um, tenacity because Aquarius is a fixed sign. Mm -hmm. um, we're also talking about humanity. 
we're talking about unconditional love and acceptance and a breakdown of barriers of race, class, gender, gender roles and stereotypes, sexual orientation, a lot of a breakdown of a lot of that old kind of fear-based tribal mentality of like us against them and shifting into something because Aquarius is more of like the water bearer, the giver, the lover, the acceptor of all humankind mm -hmm. and recognizing that we are all one and the same. We all come from the same source. We are all connected on a soul level. The physical bodies into which we're born, these are just temporary shells. We have all lived and will live lifetimes of different races and genders and classes and experiences and ways of viewing the world and lifestyles and cultures um, and so on and so forth. So Aquarius is really getting into like that universal oneness and a lot of development with technology and, and science yeah. to, to really bring it down into like a nutshell um blurb in about 1800 years they'll be going to other planets probably for sure <laughs> yeah right and and don't right. they say sometimes that you know that maybe the uh all the aliens that are are being seen they're actually our future maybe they're our future selves coming back to see what, what right we did right or what we did wrong right yeah you know i've done past yeah, life I regression mean, it's a theory but yeah. I've done past life with regression with clients yes. and what some of the stuff that they've channeled has been um, that a human lifetime, there can actually be a, with souls who come from other planets, other galaxies, other solar systems, sometimes they'll choose to come into a human lifetime on earth to further provide service, to further the nuances of that soul's growth. But that also there can be a series of human lifetimes that are all comprised within one lifetime in, in the kind of time space continuum of a lifetime for the soul mm -hmm. in that other planet or other galaxy, which I thought is particularly interesting. And that's come up with a number of clients over the years. Mm -hmm. So we think of like this birth to death as though it's this one linear process for the soul. Mm -hmm. It may only be a snippet or a chapter within a larger scope of lifetime and evolution for those folks who are maybe coming from other places. That's what, I, yeah. And I, well, and I think that other places, probably everybody is from us somewhere else maybe originally yeah. i mean we yeah. don't really know where the concept of of who we are is from right so you know maybe that is a a, a truth but it's right it's still uh you know it's still out there to whereas you know when i was younger and doing all this work people would say you know are you what do you feel about aliens what do you feel about this you know and it's such a trend now and um the thing is is that uh I didn't. I mean, I think that living upon the earth is a lot of hard work. And so it's like, let's get on it. <laughs> you know, It's a very let's energetically dense it as, experience. Yeah. Let, let's keep this experience going just as easy as possible and know that those possibilities are there, but it's not anything that you can do anything about. And it's not anything that's really going to help your life or or maybe even uh, it can hurt your life if you don't, you know, have your feet on the ground. Right. So, you know, that was the, my, that was my rationalization to people. Right. I think if you can do for the soul to have the experience of working through the hardships and the struggles and the emotional turmoil and the losses and the physical attachments and the need for, you know, all of our, our, our basic physical needs yeah. in a physical human body for the soul to manage that because it's such a dense experience. Um, it's like the soul is getting a deeper, more immersive learning experience in its evolution, as opposed to, or by contrast, 
the soul is maybe in another planet, another galaxy, different lifetime where it's less of a physically dense, a less emotionally dense, a less attachment dense, a less survival dense um, energetic platform. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think uh, often souls choose to come to earth because this is like a harder pl uh, classroom. Yeah. And everybody who's on the planet now is here, you know, kind of energy, you know, symbolically mopping decks. Everybody is doing hard work. Everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. So the age of Aquarius, we're hoping that that will be an easier, easier time. I think Hopefully every, more. every time has its challenges. Yeah. Right. As far as, you know, it's like we're talking about like getting our, our act together, mm -hmm. right? Like, like getting our, our own, um, you know, house in order as an individual, right? It's like as a, as a society, as a, as a humanity, as a, as a people, especially with a, a broadening uh, awareness, right? Of like that there's way more out there. It's like, uh, you know, I, I go back to kind of that, that movie contact, right. Where mm. we're with Jodie Foster and all where it's like, how does one take a representation of, of how it is that we live on this planet and all out into like other, other worlds. Right. And, you know, to, to kind of have, have our best foot forward, mm. you know, having our, our act together. And I think that, with with Aquarius, the the age of Aquarius, right? It's like having all this this technological information and uh, just knowledge at our at our fingertips, right? It's like how do we integrate all of that and still, again, like have have our have our act together <laughs> so that we're you know we're 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 doing our our best with it. Jason, I think you're what you're referring to in terms of the integration integration to me that's particularly salient because you know we can meditate on the hilltops and have this divine spiritual peaceful experience where you know we're just at one with the universe with our spirit guides our angels um all the beautiful healing forces of the universe we can be channeling psychically and then we um get back in our cars and get stuck in traffic and have to navigate the challenges First, in our like workplace with our spouses <laughs> our kids the you know the wi-fi that goes out the neighbor who's annoying and pissing us off and whatever you know, it's like that's coming back to earth school, taking that the integration of that wisdom, that peace, that energy, mm -hmm. and then applying it to the 3D world. That's where it gets right. real. That's yeah. where the work comes in. Yeah. Because we're not really uh, growing if we're just sitting in a meditative state all day. We can't do that. Yeah. I, we can I revisit that. that traffic. But traffic is a big the one. The teacher. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good one. Neighbors, spouses, kids, friends, exes, they're all challenges to that incredible like Buddhist, you know, right. non non-attached, divine, peaceful um peaceful energy. But Jason, I think your point about the integration, it, it, it's applying you know, the difference, like the different, they say the difference between knowledge and wisdom, knowledge is something, you know, you think up here, you, uh, you intellectually understand wisdom is the ability to apply that yeah. in your day-to-day -day existence. What this very gradual transition into Aquarius is. Um, I mean, I think we can apply that with, you know, if we look at something like um, uh, so much more vernacular, you know, like with Black Lives Matter and, you know, racial and economic discrepancies and um, gender fluidity and um, gender stereotypes and all of that kind of stuff. There are so many people who like in theory support any of this equality yet in practice don't really grasp you know and yet have their own kind of shadowy judgments and microaggressions and all that kind of stuff 
So it's like, we're all continuing to learn like, oh, wait, yeah, conceptually, I totally support this type of equality. And yet we all have these moments where it's like, oh, wait a minute, get your judgments in check. We need it, it like the, the practical application in our lives. We, we need right. the, the practice of it, right? right. So that it, 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 we just have like the, the muscle memory of it too, you know, right. in, the, in the physical. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think Aquarius by nature, it br it's going to force us, like it or not, it's going to bring us into much greater presence with people who outwardly anyway are different than us. Mm -hmm. Who are alien. <laughs> <laughs> to us in one way yeah. or another, right? You alien. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Any of us are alien to somebody right. else who's walked a different <laughs> walk than we have, right? Yeah. Right. Well, you think about like the, uh, the, you know, like the concept of aliens, you know, from other other planets and all that, like coming in a place of benevolence. But but they have their stuff too, mm -hmm. you know that that their their own like personal right you know stuff that they they work through. So you know are are, are like the best representatives coming. <laughs> you know, from, from other worlds. Right. Right. I think that we're going to have a lot more alien contacts. I think there, there's a lot more energy from other places coming in to support healing growth, new developments in consciousness yeah. and in technology. Have you seen the, the Teslas in cemeteries? Uh-huh. Yeah. Where you see actually the dead walking around. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a friend who has a Tesla and I did mention it to her the other day. Now that she's back home, she was back in, she was out in the Caribbean for a while. And it's like, hello, we're going out in your Tesla. This is going to be fun. <laughs> do, you, do you go at night though? <laughs> day, night. You can go day or night. You see it on the screen. Yeah. Mm. I'm so excited. And, and do you stop? Do you like, you I know, mean, like, I oh, there's like one. do it. You know, in the cemetery where, you know, like Ron's buried or our dad, you know, it would be so much fun. So it shows up on the camera? Oh, hmm? Yeah. Are you saying it shows, shows up, up on, the on the camera? It shows up on a, on a screen, on, on a, a screen. it's not a camera per se, but it's, it's, no, a, a, it's a sensor. Oh, it's a sensor. It's a sensor. Okay. And it shows that someone's walking. Yeah. And it shows a person walking. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. And there's, and you look out the window of the car and no one's there. But on the sensor of the, of the screen, it shows a person. So is that illustrating technology yes. developing that can prove? Yes. Yeah. That th there are things that exist beyond those that the five senses can detect. Yeah. I think we'll have a lot of that. That's going to be a lot of fun things that are right. Yeah. I mean, part of this transition astrologically into the age of Aquarius mm -hmm. is invoked by Pluto's ingress into Aquarius, which we've just had in recent weeks. And it will retrograde very, very briefly later this year, just for a few months back to like that 28 and a half, 29 degree Capricorn point. Mm -hmm. Um, but those, what they would, what are called anoretic degree points in astrology, the final degree point of 29 degrees and the zero degree point, which is the first degree, those are like crisis points mm -hmm. um, where, you know, it's like a purging, a last minute desperation of holding on to the old as the new is, is, is birthing. And so Pluto, which is the planet slash largest asteroid, D depending on how it's interpreted because we get that question all the time as astrologers okay wait so what does pluto mean astrologically now that it's been downgraded it to an asteroid, asteroid it's still right. a very 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 large rock mm. and it still has marked evolutionary and crisis purging implications in the interest of evolution for consciousness so should we talk for a few minutes about Pluto and Aquarius? I'm wondering. Yes. I mean, yes. you and I, you and I gave a, a, a lengthy talk about that. We do. We have an actual class that both 
Matthew and I have on our websites. If you want to see the class, there's a lot of astrology classes actually that we've done, yeah. but we have done uh, one where Pluto and Aquarius. Yeah. Right. Tara, it's on your website. Is, is yours uh, TaraInsight.com? Yeah, TaraInsight.com. And Matthew is MatthewEngel.com. It is M-A-T-T-H-E-W-E-N-G-E-L.com. Yeah. So it's yeah, listed as the um, under the age of Aquarius um, on my website. And Tara and I do a profit share, so it doesn't matter who yeah you know, who goes who, who, goes, who, who, who you buy the class from. It yeah. doesn't matter. And the classes are very affordable. Those downloads yeah. are twenty twenty five dollars. Yeah, um, yeah, they're fun. They're they're great downloads. Um, and you know we did it was a good hour hour and a half long class. Um, yeah, about the age of Aquarius specifically with Pluto. Yes. But highlights, should we give a few bullets relevant? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do, do you want to, I, I know you were, you were just revisiting. Cause I, I know you messaged me yesterday or the day before saying you were watching our download wa- about I was a year ago. <laughs> what were some of the, what were some of the highlights that you, uh... <laughs> well, you know, we felt that um, the uh, age of Aquarius and because Pluto started to come in, uh, it, you know, it, it, it hit, um, was it October that it first hit? Uh, well, last year in 23, it hit Eight. Aquarius for a very short time. time. Right. Uh, and then it in yeah. uh, retrograded back to Capricorn. Right. And, um, then, and then it was just yeah. January of this year, 24, that yeah. it went back to Aquarius. Right. So we're in Aquarius now. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and so it just seems appropriate, you know, because we're in Moon in Aqu- Aquarius. We're- New Moon? Yeah, new moon in Aquarius. We're in, um, you know, uh, in Aquarius. The sun is in Aquarius right now. So it was yep. just a We've got a whole stellium this at this time. with Aquarius. And you and I also did a class on the significance of the moon cycles, new moons yes. and full moons and moving through every single sign. Yeah, the eclipses. I mean, the we've eclipses. done everything, yeah. Yeah, we've covered a lot of that in terms of the a more comprehensive yeah. um, discussion of the significance of that. Mm-hmm. but um you know just going back to a point from earlier today just we've got this like the term you use when you and I have talked about Pluto before Tara that really resonated for me you always refer to Pluto as jet fuel yeah it's jet fuel it just ignites yeah everything right it ignites it destructive the cru- with that jet fuel yes or constructive right you choose right and in order to grow something i i've written about for years and years and years i always say crisis is the platform for transformation <laughs> because that is what prompts us right to delve more deeply into our consciousness into our pain into our patterning into our thought constructs and our beliefs into our attachments to take a really in-depth look at how that's working for us and what we need to change and what traumas we need to heal. Pluto transits, Pluto changes along with that jet fuel fuel. It brings a lot of drama too. Oh yeah. You can bring in drama, Pluto <laughs> drama. Ooh. Right. Right. Yeah. So Pluto uh, drama with Aquarius would be t- totally different than some other. Than Pluto, Pluto drama in Capricorn. Well, when Pluto went into Capricorn, yeah. that is when the economy tanked 2008. Yeah. We had a lot coming, hitting the news mm-hmm. about policies and procedures and all of that stuff that kind of set the big banks up yeah. for failure. And that was when it was kind of the beginning of Black Lives Matter and looking at the, those economic and racial injustices. It was the beginning of a lot in the vernacular about like the 1% movement and there were all of the, you know, the, the, the marches and all of that, um, shutting down roads, you know, pe- the pe- pe- pl- a, with Aquarius, it's like the power to the people. Yeah. With Pluto, it's, it's like consciousness, awareness and what is the shadow or the darker side well, it can negativity be and represented it. within that archetype? So in Capricorn, mm-hmm. that was like economic structures and power structures and all of the 
you know, the misuse of power and all the different, so many different ways that that played out in our society. While Pluto hitting Aquarius, what we're first looking at is injustices in humanity, injustices and where social media has gone awry. I don't want to get sent to Facebook or Meta, meta Jail here, which we were kind of <laughs> joking about before the show. I know. But there's been a lot of stuff hitting the right. news. Um, it was just, there was a, a New York Times article just this past week how um, Elon Musk with, um, with Twitter, which is now called X, he got apparently according to this article, got rid of like the fact checkers mm -hmm. for politics for, for the Twitter or, or the X feeds. So basically like, I, I guess. So it can go be wild. It can be animal. Yeah, anything goes. Can post all kinds of wild west bull malarkey and oh, there's wow. no fact checking, which had been implemented a few years ago. That's bullying. And that's total bullying. bullying. Yeah. So he got rid of it. It's like that to me is that part of the shadow side of social media where we just yeah. have this, it's, it's social media is wonderful in that it gives everybody a voice. It I, gives everybody a platform. It's a way of connecting people around the world. That's very Aquarian energy. Very Aquarian. In, in a beautiful way. Yeah. Right. You and I became friends through social media. Like yeah. probably 2008, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, with, the, with the birth of, early days of facebook yeah um but the shadow side is when people start getting into all this bickering and the arguing and start spewing fake information and exaggerated stuff that's just removed from you know and everybody's commenting it on and everybody starts believing um <laughs> fake news right fake news and the dissemination rampant dissemination of it that is the shadow side of Aquarius. Yeah. Can, can I ask a question about like uh, a, another aspect of, of Aquarius too, yeah. which which I, I usually incorporate as, as like part of the, the three eyes, um, you know, like uh, the letter I, um, where it's, you know, it's, it's about, you know, new intelligence, new mm -hmm. inventiveness and all that, but also yeah. the, the aspect of, of independence. Yeah. It is because technology has a way of, like uh, again kind of like giving the individual a voice as opposed to you know in the in the old world it was like you, you know you had uh information that that was given from from the top down and now yeah. it's like everyone you know has has an opinion and can can voice it right so yeah. so that that idea of independence or or being independent being a more of an individual I mean that can that can go out into ways of you know expressing oneself in in all of the uh, the, the the social ways, but also in our spiritual quest as well. You know, rather than looking for the group to be a part of, it's like you know finding what resonates for for one as as an individual. Freedom, independence, absolutely. Those are very Aquarian expressions. And to your point, I think with uh, people rejecting information or rules, structure, discipline, um, tradition, conventionality, uh, certain norms that may have been handed down from one generation to the next, people are rejecting that. People are rejecting corporate workplace rules. People want to work from home. People don't want to like sell their souls to like the corporate whatever, you know, where they completely lose themselves and become unhealthy. Um, people, you know, the younger generation, particularly millennials and now Gen Zers who are, um, you know, making their way into the workforce um you know some of the older generation a lot of people criticize the younger generation for saying oh they just don't have any work ethic they don't want to work well maybe some don't but also a lot of those younger gener younger generation adults are saying wait a minute no i don't want to work to the point where i am making myself sick in the intro right. corporate profits or just making money or 
whatever, you know, they're, they're looking at how they can, you know, be more uh, creative, working maybe smarter, not harder. Right. As the old expression goes, more creative ways of working. Yeah, utilizing the technology for sure. Right. Right. Absolutely. Use that technology to, to be able to generate profits and, and to get messaging out or um, just to work differently. Um, that I think is very Aquarian. And I think, you know, those Aquarian ideals compared to Pluto, which was in Capricorn, um, it's more about, is this serving my independent journey? Is it serving the collective consciousness? Is it serving humanity? Um, versus is it serving an old, perhaps outdated regime of authority and conventionality. Yeah. So I think that's part of what we're working on with at least the Pluto and Aquarius years. Yeah. And Pluto will remain in Aquarius for, I believe it's about 21 years. Am I correct? Yeah. Whew. Um, you know, Pluto, um, Pluto moves in an irregular um ellipse around the sun so it uh, unlike most of the other planets it does not spend the exact same amount of time in each sign mm -hmm. so we had approximately 16 years of pluto in capricorn whereas we've got i think it's about 21 years um from beginning to complete yeah end. and it's like Paris. a 248 basic cycle of Saturn. Uh, I know Pluto, Pluto moving Pluto, all the way through Pluto. the sun. All so not times. everybody's Pluto or everybody's, you know, uh, uh, signs will hit within that Pluto um, conjunction. Right. So the thing is, it's very interesting as far as when it does, because remember it the, hits the jet fuel. Because right. I have a stellium in Sagittarius. So when it was in Sagittarius, Pluto... Oh, wow. All that must have been by a planet time for you. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been so, uh, 90s into the early 2000s. Yeah. You were on literally on fire. I was on fire. Yeah. Sag is a fire sign. You're right. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I thought, oh, lucky me. <laughs> but it was yeah. fine. You know, I, it was a lot of spinning out of control sometimes, but it was, yeah, it was fine. I've lived through it. Of course, and probably rebirthed many times. Many times, it. yeah. Multiple lifetimes within a lifetime. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. really interesting because a lot of people would not ever live within one lifetime anyway to see Pluto conjuncting with their sun or their moon or certain planets because Pluto takes about 248 years to make its way through all 12 zodiac signs the majority of the population would not see within one lifetime that set of transits that you I did. Know. Isn't it interesting? So I think a bigger point also in looking at Pluto is that, you know, Pluto, because it stays in the same sign for a long period of time, Pluto moves very slowly and it is about purging and, you know, consciousness evolution and death and rebirth, literally or metaphorically, energetically, on on societal generational levels but it also similarly affects an individual astrological birth chart yeah very very deeply in intimacy so you have to really look at where what pluto is doing within your own individual chart to see what areas of your own life are being ignited by that jet fuel right yeah so Aquarius, it's a great sign. So thankful, thankful yeah. we're going into, uh, you know, because Pisces, it would have been a little harder because, you know, Pisces, With the ages. Yeah. Going back to the epochs. Yeah. You would point it out moves in reverse, unlike the right. planets moving around the solar system that go in, you know, that sequence from Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, yeah. et cetera, through Pisces yeah. at the end of the Zodiac. Whereas the, with the epochs or the ages, that actually is going in a reverse motion. Right. So 
while Pluto has transitioned from Capricorn to Aquarius, we you were pointing out before the show that the epochs or the ages are actually going in reverse. So we're transitioning out of Pisces into Aquarius. Yeah. Yeah. And then you think of the 2000 years before that would have been in Aries. And that was a, I mean, think of what all the Roman so from Empire, Aries going in reverse to Pisces. All yeah. the, uh, you know, it was a, like a, all those wars, all that building of civilization during that Aries, you know, age and um, Taurus age, huge. Right. The, the cow became everything, you know, and, you know, that's why. Became it, sacred in yeah, India. Yeah, sacred in the age of Taurus. Yeah. And right. yeah, well, and Hathor in Egypt as well. You know, so it's just interesting. So, Jason, before the show, you were making a series of really good points about, you know, what, how the age of Pisces might be contrasted to the age of Aquarius. Yeah. And I'm curious if you would talk more about that. Go for it, Jason. Uh, <laughs> Not I'm trying to remember. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I think that you know, like because of the, the 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 spiritual aspects that that also you know the Piscean age with uh, you know Christianity and and all being very you know it's like you have the symbols of the fish right for for oh. for Christ and and all that. Um, but I, I think that you know if if anything, it's like we we look to to build on our experiences. You know, as as individuals, as a as a people, right? As as a as a humanity, you know, rather than just kind of locking something in, it's about how it is that that we evolve, how it is that that we, you know, uh, hopefully, it's not always the case, but you know, we, we hopefully learn from our our experiences, and as we become more technologically advanced how we, um, again, I'll use that word, integrate, so, so that we're, we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves. that, mm -hmm. that we, you know, hold on to the, the, those basic uh, concepts of, of humanity, the, the, the things that hold us together as a, as a, as a people, a, as a world, you know, because that, that's really where, where it, you know, the, the, the main differences are is that instead of like someone being born and dying in in roughly the same area of, of geography it's like you know the entire world is is accessible to us you know and that that is a, a relatively you know new idea for 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 anyone for for anyone to you know come into that all right, because of the, the means of travel, uh, of, of our awareness of just, you know, just saying, oh, you know, this, this is like our, our, our world, you know, this is, this is where we, we live and, and we, we can understand it, you know, in a, we can, we can see it, we can, we have those shots from space saying, this is the planet, right? We, we have a very, um, you know, concise viewpoint of that. And, and so how we, how we expand on that, how we, how we build on that is that's, uh, th that's the part where, um, you know, I, I think that what, what we can bring to it as practitioners is, is like helping the individual, like see how they can expand, uh, you know, their, their own, their own world or their own, you know, uh, worldview, their own uh, way of seeing how that they can, um like activate their uh you know what I, what I would call like their their sense of greatest purpose you know mm -hmm. in in this life um I, I think what what Tara was talking about earlier where you know it's it, it is about um you know recognizing the, the 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 physical you know how to get like uh activated in in a way that you're you're you know, making the, the most of your, your, your talents, your gifts, but you're, you're, you're bringing the, the two together where your, your, your spiritual self and your physical self come together and, and get to the, 
the, the, the best possible, um, you know, place or outcome for, for yourself as an individual. You know, I, I think that, um, you, you know, we, we build on, you know, to get back to like that, that Piscean part of it, it's like, you, you know, it's like we, we do have a, a rich spiritual history within our, within our being. Um, but, but we need to, uh, also make sure that the, the individual is not being like just, um, overlooked, you know, that, that our, our own spiritual evolution, that, that if there's something that works for us as an individual that didn't work as being part of a, a group that, that we're, we're activating that, that we're not just ignoring that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about your point about, you know, kind of this rich spiritual history. And I'm thinking about the age of Pisces, which corresponded um, with the birth of Christianity and this very widespread faith, which in many ways is beautiful, but there can also be the loss of, I, I think the, the shadow side of any religion or faith can be, you know, that there is a loss of one's ability to think for oneself. You know, can we integrate some of those teachings with our own belief system? Can we really feel that on a deeper, more conscious level? Or are we just, you know, kind of rattling off what the Sunday school teacher said without having any sense of inner agency or any sense of integration of what that truly means? Well, um, maybe the, um, you know, the, the uh, evolution of that would be that with the Aquarius is that you really are living your truth. Yeah. You that know, makes you sense learn to all me. these things, like it's not just about you. It's about everybody, you know, and you, right. you, um, you tend to treat other people how you would want to be treated and you do the same thing, you know, with how you've learned. That's right. the golden rule, though. I mean, that that can be, you know, like one of the greater um, lessons of the last 2000 years or, you know, with with even like Christianity or, you know, the 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 religions that that teach about Three compassion, you know, that Hinduism and Buddhism, the, aren't they predated of 2000 years? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But it, it's like, you know, with, uh, it, you know, there's there's in the past there, there's just been like areas that have their their religions and and all that are part of the the geography of it but because of the this age of information and all mm -hmm. it's like being able to take the, the the best of the best you know as as an individual to be able to to yeah to to, to learn to to see to put into practice what what is the best of the best from from those those religions so that those those common threads that were woven in the past you know for the the for for us to to be able to um you know take on as as a as an individual and and it may not be so you know relegated to the uh like the the religious aspects meaning like the the terminology you know, but but the essence is there. It's like the 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 main points of it, and and that too will evolve. Mm -hmm. it, it will evolve as as we you know go go further, and mm -hmm. and and probably you know by the time it hits Capricorn, <laughs> you know it will probably get you know like more uh, more rigid <laughs> as far as the rules and you know the disciplines of it. But but for now, to um, you know, as, as an individual to, to explore, you know, these, these potentials within them and, and to not get too, too locked into it. You know, I, I have a, a, a saying sometimes to, to, to classes and all that, where it's like, if we look to put God in a box, right. It's like, we're, we're, we're stifling our, our own uh, spiritual connection. If we look to define things too hard, then, then we get, you know, just just locked into as as to how it's going to uh, evolve, um, both naturally and also with a, you know, that that sense of of freedom that, oh. that we can 
uh, move forward in. Yeah. With Pisces, yeah. Pisces needs faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we all need some degree of faith, but Pisces energy is really going to, but I think part of the, the challenge is that there can be perhaps coming out of the Piscean age, um, when there is when faith turns into blind faith mm -hmm. and fear and irrationality and projection and um there there because pisces also has the, the murkiest of all boundaries right yeah. mm -hmm. of all the signs of the zodiac the the more shadow side of pisces can be the loss of self you know losing oneself in some kind of ideology, in some kind of belief system, in even more of like a tribal mentality, if you will. Yeah. Whereas to piggyback, Jason, off of your point, again, kind of like with that Aquarian independent spirit, if one is able to think and believe and feel as kind of a master of one's own inner agency, while taking elements of faith and belief and higher consciousness and thinking, and then universalize that to say, okay, I may, for example, have come from a different religious faith or spiritual faith system than you, but there is oneness still in all of that. It makes me think of the term namaste, which translates to, you know, through, you know, the light in my spirit, I see and honor the light in yours. That regardless of our ideologies, of our backgrounds, we can take an essence, bits and pieces, a sprinkling from that, and still see this universal oneness mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a very healthy respect for our differences and know that there is actually divinity mm -hmm. in difference. Well, I think that's very Aquarian. Right. And it may be the like some of the health issues and the health mental health issues right. of um this last part of Pisces because you know that 29 degrees Pisces, I mean that's tough, you know. So whatever that's been going through, right. like, ooh, dragging through our society, right. you know, in right. the Pisces age is, you know, maybe, you know, uh the last karma of some of that, whereas it's like, no, no. A, you know Aquarius hopefully the age of Aquarius will will come in and have a lot more solving right so there's a solution to that let's just right solve. yeah I mean actually that's a great point for yeah. the end of the age of um, Pisces the mental health so many teens particularly are at this yeah. in these last several years yeah but you know there's just been a surge um in the surge. struggle with depression with anxiety and on the positive note there's been a language and a voice given to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A and discussion and accessibility and getting kids into therapy, getting them support, coming together, talking about that shared experience, normalizing some of that so that it's not just hidden in a more yeah. subversive way. Because of course, the things that we feel and we experience that there is no voice for, those are the things it that fester and make it worse. We have to give, we have to get our pain out and give it a voice in order to heal it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think part of the transition also then into Aquarius, of course, with the age of technology, there's access to therapy and courses and development, you know, through technology, case in point, oh, yeah. you know, for my own uh, private practice, I mean, I had been doing some work remotely for any number of years when COVID hit. I, as many practitioners, I shifted my entire practice online. I have not gone back. All of my therapy clients, my coaching clients, my astrology, hypnotherapy, it's all online, which then makes it more accessible, universally speaking, using the technology, the airwaves um, to right. get that and healing. It's great. Right. And I do the same thing. And Jason does the same thing. But uh, I did, you know, I do ha have new space that I'm right. to. So I do have an office to yeah. hypnotize anyone who wants an appointment. There you go. Yes. Yeah. And you can use it too, man. 
Nancy, I'd have to come down to LA to, to access it, but thank you. Right. Maybe a will for a workshop or to co-teach. Oh something yes, with you. absolutely. Cause I do have meeting space too. So yeah. So yeah. that's great. Great, great, great. You know, now you have to have free parking and you know, none of this ridiculous right. stuff. Oh, par in a metropolitan area, having parking, that is a, oh, um, a big thing. That is a thing. Bonus. People have to get <laughs> there. Thing. Some people yeah. will, will like totally like just not like do anything because it's like, well, how, how, how do I park when I get there or whatever? And it's like, oh, oh yeah. it's like a oh, big deal. <laughs> I went to an event the other night and it was $30 for parking. Like, oh. And by the time you give them a tip and everything. Yeah. It's right. Because like, you don't want to leave the person out is like, you know, are these people being paid or are they living only on tips? Right. Because you're not going to, you know. It was crazy. Right. Yeah. Having had private practice offices yeah. in a central neighborhood in San Francisco yeah. for yeah. 17, 18 years, whenever I'd get a new client, I'd be sending this email, like with all of the, like, here are the little side streets where you're more right. likely to find parking. These are the areas that have parking restrictions on these days, those hours. Yeah. You know, it was. Yeah. It I don't like challenge. any of that stuff. Right. Yeah, nightmare. I love, I love not having to deal with that now. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've so, never had to de deal with that too much. But so what is your, your website, Matthew? Oh, it's MatthewEngel.com. M-A-T-T-H-E-W-E-N-G-E-L dot com. And actually, I'll put it in the There you go. I put it in the chat box for those who are watching visually. I don't know if that showed up on the Facebook stream. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Probably. How about you, Jason? What is yours? My, my website, Jason D. McKean, J-A-S-O-N, D as in Dumbledore, the wizard. Well, Dragon Lord today because of the, uh, it's going, we're going into uh, Chinese New Year. Oh, yeah. The dragon. Okay. All right. And I am a dragon. I am born oh, in the are. year of the dragon. So right. looking forward to a, a spectacular year. Awesome. But uh, the last part, McKean, M-C-K-E-A-N.com, Jason D. McKean .com. Did I get it right? Oh, Did yeah. There you go. Okay. Yep. And Fantastic. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. And kind I'm ParaInsight.com. Last but definitely not least, Thank our you. host. Yes. So, Jason, are you doing any uh, Japanese seminars this week? I I did last week, and mm -hmm. um, you know, technology—it's amazing. I have a translator who, uh, you know, does all of the the, the translating of. She, she, I, I hopefully, you know, she's just making me sound more intelligent, better, you know, maybe, maybe it's a totally different yeah, course, you, you know, maybe she's just like, <laughs> it's her agenda, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to be able to, to teach in, in another land, right? I mean, it's very Aquarian. Yes, yeah, very Aquarian. Yeah. You are both so gifted, energetic on so many levels, but you both find these like random people to totally get the tech out there to totally help with this at facet of the business or the other you're both exceptionally resourceful in having someone who will help with this part that part the other part <laughs> to get the you know the nuts and bolts out yeah, there we gotta get the nuts yeah. and bolts <laughs> together yeah 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 <clears throat> Well, thank you for being on the show, guys. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's Absolutely. I love connecting with both of you. Yeah. Happy Age of Aquarius, everybody. Aquarius. Yeah. yeah. And Year of the Dragon. Happy Chinese New Year. Yeah. And happy New Moon. Happy yeah. New Moon. Yeah. And uh, ride that, that free love, the dawning of the Age of Aquarius. Uh, it always makes me think of the the theme song from the musical Hair. Sing it, Beautiful. sing it, Matthew. I, I won't hit, sing it because I don't want to scare away your <laughs> listeners. <laughs> But Jason, you've got that beautiful uh, harmony and voice. understanding, <laughs> sympathy and joy abounding. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of love, everybody, and blessings. You as well. Take care. <laughs>